Okay, so I thought we'd take one last example of looking at cards and finding probabilities of certain very simple things. Of course, finding the probabilities of more exotic things like winning at poker or winning at blackjack actually require you to use those combinations and permutations in a very slick way. And in fact, card counters really have the talent of being able to sort of see how many cards are left and which cards have already been discarded and thus figure out the likelihood that a particular card that hasn't come up will come up. Really tough business. Anyway, let's just look at some simple examples and see how the probabilities will work out just if you wanted to pick some cards. Now, when you're thinking about cards, I'm thinking big cards here, folks, big cards. But in fact, you can ask for just a regular sized deck of cards. What's the probability, for example, that if I just pick a card out at random, that it's an ace? Let's think about that. All I have to do is ask how many equally likely possibilities, how many equally likely outcomes are there? I could have, well, 52. There's 52 cards in a deck. And then, how many successes are there? Well, how many aces are there? Well, there are four aces. So in fact, the probability of me picking out a card and having it be an ace is four, the number of successes, over 52, the number of equally likely outcomes. Well, I didn't do it that time, but four over 52 is actually not very likely. So in fact, four over 52 is 1 13th. And so in fact, uh, and how, how do I do that by four over 52? Because it's two over uh, 26. And 2 over 26 is 1 over 13. So 1 13th. So that means that if I do this 13 times, I would expect on average that one of them would be an ace if I did 13 times. So not very, very likely. How about if I wanted to actually pick a card that's red? Well, how many red cards are there? Well, actually, it turns out that half of them are red. So in fact, um, 26 of the 52 are actually red. So that means that the probability of picking a red card is going to be 26 divided by 52, which is a half, which is sort of what you'd expect. If half of them are red, you'd expect that half the time. So if I pick one at random, well, it's not a red. But what if I pick one again? It is a red. OK, fine. So that's exactly sort of what you'd expect. And if you did that for a long time, you'd expect that the probability is 50-50 that you see a red card. What if I want to actually pick the king of clubs? Now, I want to pick the king of clubs. Let me give myself a little backdrop here. If I wanted to pick the king of clubs, the question is, well, first of all, how many cards are there? Well, it turns out that there are 52, of course. And how many successes? Well, not success is exactly one card. So it's one out of 52. So the probability of actually seeing the king of clubs as the card to pick at random is actually very low. It's just one out of 52. So it's not very likely. You wouldn't expect that to happen. Of course, if you're really lucky, then you might be able to actually get the right choice and get the king of clubs right there up in front. That is a one heck of a big king of clubs. They don't come much bigger than that. Anyway, probability, the key is to do some careful counting, see how many equally likely total possibilities there are, and out of those equally likely possibilities, count how many are actually considered successful. If they're red cards, there would be 26 successes. If you're looking for the king of uh, clubs, there's only one success. Then you can actually compute the probabilities by just dividing those two numbers. All right. Well, congratulations on mastering probability. I hope you use this to make a lot of money. If you feel guilty about making a lot of money, please don't feel bad to send that extra cash, that guilt-ridden cash, to me in person, and I'll take care of it. See you soon.